Hey, Jay, it's uh, amazing to connect with you again. Thanks for reaching out and asking for the interview. Um, and I'll surely share and post uh, the article once it's up, too. So, to get to your questions. Um, question one, the year is 2012 in San Diego, and you gave Jay on, drums, Jay on the drums his first opportunity to drum in a yoga setting. What do you recall from this time period? Oh, my goodness. I recall writing... Um, I recall <laughs> getting uh, my yoga certification a few months prior, not really wanting to be a yoga te- not really thinking I wanted to be a yoga teacher, and then knowing that, like, oh, I wanted to be a yoga teacher, but not really being attached on how that was going to happen. Um, and then, you know, the universe started giving me opportunities, and one of them was to manage a and build a yoga studio in a music shop. Um, because it was in a music shop, it was like, yeah, we need to have live music. And so I didn't really know many people, and I thought, well, let me do Craigslist. And I posted an ad on Craigslist, and I remember you came in, and you were, like, as new as I was to all this. And we both kind of were like, let's just do it and see what happens. And the classes were amazing. Every class where you played the drums was amazing. And um, it's really, it just simply put, it makes me smile looking back on that time period because it kind of is how I feel today with accomplishing all that I have. Um, I don't really know, you know, everything, I don't really know much. I just follow my heart and I know that's what we did You know, from me writing the Craigslist ad to you answering it to us having these classes together and then continue to following the dream and the innocence of that is still very much alive in me. And that I don't really know like business secrets or, you know, I just kind of let uh, the angels push me where I need to go and it feels good. (laughs) The beginning of the yoga career was... um, And at that point, too, even though I was managing a studio, I was still a a writing professor at a few local colleges in San Diego. And um, I didn't, you know, again, there was no plan. Um, I didn't know that I would ever be a full-time healer. And so it's just, it was the beginning of a journey that I wasn't even aware, you know, in that way. But then I was so aware, if that makes sense. To how have things changed for you since that time? Um, you know, I continue to go to my practice, my yoga practice has just expanded. And when I started, you know, I would practice as a yoga teacher, I'd practice maybe a few times a week. Um, and then I remember maybe like six or seven months in as a yoga teacher, I was like, okay, I need to do self practice. Like, cause I never practiced at home by myself. I would always go to a studio and that was really hard for me to start a self practice And there's a direct correlation between the ease and flow and growth and success in my life with the amount of yoga that I do per day. Um, And yoga, not just meaning asana, meaning meditation, pranayama, uh, breathing, um, and just being mindful and grounded and present in my life. Um, But the main thing that changes, I go to the mat a lot a lot and it keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger so over the past six years uh, my practice currently today is about two and a half hours a day uh one and a half hours minimum and that you know is just hygiene for me now it's not even like you know just the joy of going to the mat it's more than just like basic upkeep like brushing my teeth like i have to do it uh, to be able to stay centered and balanced and do the big things that I'm doing in my life. Um, and so things have changed in that I've just become more deeply connected with yoga through my own personal practice. And then from that, everything else has come into space um, into play. And that is solely because of the self-work that I've been doing thanks to the medicine of yoga, which then opened the doors to so many other things. I'm a Reiki master, um, and I have been one for the past six years, and um, I'm leading Reiki, and for the past four years, I've been certifying people in Reiki and yoga teacher trainings, Um, yin yoga, stand-up paddleboard yoga, and then the various levels of Reiki, um, 
one, two, three, and four in certification programs. And I did that out of my house up until a few months ago. Um, I put on San Diego Yoga Festival, which was really amazing. You came over to Shocker Camp when I first started dabbling with the idea of having some sort of like festival-ish event where we were together throughout the day or throughout the weekend. Shocker Camp was amazing. I did that for two years. The first year, I believe we had 30 people. And the second year, I believe we had like 50 people. Um, and, you know, the teachers just did it for the love of it. You did it for the love of it. Um, and then San Diego Yoga Festival came out of it. And the first year, I had a 1,000 people there. And last year, we had 4,000 people there. And so it's like I'm putting on these huge festivals now. And how did that happen? You know, and all I can say is like, I'm just watching my life and going to the mat and um, it's beautiful and now I own a yoga studio so I've always had my own yoga business but there's something about actually having like a studio with a sign with your name on it that makes it you know with daily classes and having other people work there graduates of my training and, um, and that just happened like my grand opening was September 1st and so all these amazing things just keep coming uh and i can only thank the yoga i can really only thank the yoga and the practice that i have every day for it making me strong and wiser and calmer and healthier to have the stamina and the clarity to create a business and then uh, give my heart to it um i found my way through yoga i found my way to yoga through desperation it wasn't out of choice I mean I guess we always have a choice but I was having severe panic attacks um, about 10 years ago back in New Jersey that's where I grew up and severe panic attacks and a mental breakdown I mean I couldn't get out of bed I took off a month of life and I had a stomach ache uh, that just crippled me and I thought there was something seriously wrong with me physically and then it ended up be all created in my head it was a mental disturbance and so I was put on antidepressants and that numbed me and that made the heavy feelings of anxiety go away and I was able to become functional and a productive member of society again but I knew I needed more and that was when I I started to meditate first Um, and then that led me to yoga which then led me to all these other healing modules which eventually led me to San Diego, which then led me to this whole path that I'm on here today. So um, I think anytime that any person's going through a hard part of their life, um, you know, the silver lining is that it's a blessing. I'm grateful for my anxiety and the panic attacks and the mental pain and disturbances that I had because it it is it gave me back my life and it introduced me to all these other things that I probably wouldn't have found. Because I, I'd never have been an athletic person, a flexible person. I'm still not some days. I, you know, I get really like, woo, winded when I'm on the mat. And that's, you know, just because it's just kind of part of my na- makeup um, of who I am. And so it wouldn't have been my choice to go to the yoga. And I'm so grateful that I have because it, it, it saved my life. It gave me life. And um, it is my life. Um, my favorite part about being a teacher is just... I was I think I was born to be a teacher when I was little like people would play when we were kids we would play and I would always play school which people would think that would be so weird because like we hated being in school so why when we weren't in school were you going to play school so I would teach to my stuffed animals and my dolls and I would do that for hours all of the time and um so I think I was born to be a teacher because then I went to college to be a teacher and um I was a writing professor before I was a yoga teacher and I think through teaching, you really learn something. And I'm always a student. I love to learn. And yoga allows you to be uh, a student of your own body, a student of your own soul, a student of your own mind, a student to study who and what you are. And then that kind of reverberates out into the world, into um everything else and so to be a teacher uh first allows me to continue and inspires me to continue to study but uh the most important subject which is you know the self and then to watch others and be able to pass that wisdom on to others is just so priceless and it's it's so beautiful being in front of the classroom is my favorite view in the world it is most beautiful thing for me to see people uh 
wanting to and actively changing and learning and growing as they studied their self. The studio uh, that I opened in Imperial Beach is very exciting. Um, it is many things. It's a donation-based yoga studio. So we offer two classes a day. And it's either yoga class or meditation class. And I'm really big about bringing meditation to the community. I don't feel that a lot of places have a lot of meditation. And so half the schedule is meditation and half the schedule is yoga. Because they're both, you know, yoga really. Uh, if you go back to like the limbs and the, the theology behind it. But meditation and sitting with themselves, the self is a very important art and healing module. And I wanted to provide that as something separate and important on the schedule. And so it's donation-based yoga and meditation classes daily. Um, or you can be a monthly member for only $25. The idea is progressive. It is something that I've seen be done um, in a few studios throughout the country and one studio did in San Diego for a while and then they changed over to being a play, you know, a paid place with the traditional $100 a month membership. I, my soul and heart feels heavily to uh, stay, stick with this model and it's not to get people to come in because if you know me, I already have a solid following. I've been doing it for uh, six plus years and um, I'm not it's not to like it's not a marketing ploy uh, it is truly just me what feels right I want to give um, and I know that the yoga and the meditation just being a teacher of it gives enough I know that but I feel that sometimes people hold themselves back from coming to the mat because they don't um, we always look for excuses and so money is an easy excuse. We can say, oh, I don't have money for this. Oh, I don't have, you know, money and time. But we, we, there's a, those are illusions uh, in our head. And so, and part of healing is breaking through the illusions. So I'm taking the money component out of it. Yes, you do have to pay a minimum of $3 to come. Or you could be a member and come unlimited for $25 a month. Which, let's be honest, that's how much one class really costs at most places, at least here in California. And um, it's making it accessible so that the money component is out of it. And, you know, I am promising this for a year. And my intention and the gut feeling that I have is it won't change. Um, it will only change if it's not supported by humanity. If we can't get our... And I'm very open with the numbers uh, with people. And if we can get 200 members and keep that consistently for you know, a month and rent doesn't increase more than, you know, 3% on my end, then, uh, this business model will stay. Um, and it feels right to me. It's what I want to do. And it's not to devalue any other yoga studio or to say that a membership is not worth it. A hundred bucks or a class isn't worth 20, uh, because the yoga is priceless to me and I would pay a million dollars for it. Um, but this is the direction that I feel I just have the strong urge that I, I want it to be and it feels right. And it's the only way that I wanted to open a studio is if I could do it from this perspective. So uh, that's that. And then also um, it's a Reiki clinic and there is no place like this. <laughs> and honestly, I don't think in the world there's definitely no place like this in the United States. And I did a, like a strong Google search. <laughs> to, like, did I? did I make up this idea or did I take this from someone? And it's truly an idea that is, uh, you know, from my heart and it's a clinic and it actually is inspired by like, you know, the old school masters in Japan, they would talk about having Reiki clinic, but they would never really explain what it was like, you know, in there, you hear all these different stories and the way that it was explained is not kind of how mine is or the space is. Um, but I was inspired by community acupuncture actually, because I go to community acupuncture semi-regularly, maybe every week or every other week. And it's only $25 and you can get an acupuncture session. And it makes it very accessible for me to go weekly or semi-weekly. And it changed my life and continues to hold space for me. And the community acupuncture movement is huge. And it really makes this medicine, which would be privately, you know, at least $50 to $60 to $100 a session minimum, uh allows the healing to just be the healing and so we're doing the same with reiki so there's 11 massage tables set up for a couple hours a couple times a week and people can come in for 25 dollars and get um, a reiki session and they get it's more than reiki it's energy healing there's crystals there's plant medicine there's binary beats each person gets their own kind of healing center 
or section um, and then different Reiki healers, myself and my students go around and give healings and we leave you with a prescription. It's it's very unique and very potent and um, so far we've only been open a few days and we've given close to 80 healings already, which is very, very cool. Because I'm, you know, if I were to do that privately, that would be 80 hours. So that would probably be like a month's worth of work for me. Um, and so it's able to get it to the masses in an affordable way and like just people leaving after they've come, like, people have said things like, oh my gosh, that is better than a massage. Like, I feel so relaxed. I've never felt like, they just look like they're kind of, like, high coming out of it. And so, if you're in San Diego, definitely come and, and check it out, because uh, I'm very proud of this uh, style that I've created, and, you know, it's, um, it's patented. It's not something that anyone else is doing or can just do now, and my idea is to hope to have, you know, yoga with Shauna Reiki clinics popping up uh, throughout the country one day, you know, one thing at a time right now. For now, we're just starting with this studio here. Um, the process of opening up my own studio, people keep saying, oh, congratulations on your dream. And I'm like, I never dreamt this. <laughs> I had goals, you know, but my goal was never to have a studio. And it's so funny um, because I would always argue the opposite. Keep your overhead expenses low take the pressure off of you so you feel comfortable and then just allow the teachings to do their magic. Um, and so I was doing it out of my house for four years and it was really amazing. I mean, all of those trainings and students that have went through that experience, it's very, very grassroots and that like my dogs would be on, you know, their mat with them. Like we'd be practicing literally in my kitchen. Um, and I like doing that because I was able to show my students, you know, not only cause financially it helped support me, but too like it showed my students that I practice what I preach like here's my house you're not seeing products you're not seeing plastic you're not seeing tvs like you're seeing everything that I'm saying like I live I'm living the medicine and this is I'm not hiding anything you can see what's in my refrigerator um and so you know but being able to do that actually allowed me to save enough money to then be able to open a space. But that was not my intention. It was only about a few months ago that I started feeling uncomfortable in my house. Like I was outgrowing it. At most, I could fit 15 people in there. And when it was 15 people, even 10, it was too packed. I had to get creative with it. Like we would go outside and I live on the beach and that was nice. But who was getting sunburned? It was just time to evolve. I felt like I was outgrowing my... Uh, you know, I was outgrowing my wings and I needed to shed them and allow bigger wings to come. And so I started looking for a place. And when I started looking for a place, it was like the only thing I could think about was like, now there's no way I'm definitely opening a studio. And then I found a place that actually is pretty perfect. Um, the angels delivered as they always do. And the process to opening it was, um, it was actually a little bit challenging in that, like, uh, there's a lot of money that goes into it up front. And that's also the funny thing about the donation based, you know, you know, business model here in $25 Reiki sessions, as opposed to a hundred, hundred and fifty dollars what I charge, you know, privately. I tell people, I'm like, my bills are not donation. The rent is not donation. This is a business experiment, allowing people to have the freedom to pay what they want and to continually to come back to stand up for the medicine and show, use their dollar as a peaceful protest to make the things that they want exists and I'll keep the prices low if you show up. I'll show up when you show up. And so uh, the process of opening it was a little bit challenging because, you know, things are a little bit more expensive than you would think and things don't go as smoothly as you plan and, you know, it's vulnerable. I was very vulnerable um, and I'm, I'm still kind of getting through that vulnerability, but it's just a, ne a next step that I have to continually work on myself to make myself strong and wise and make the right decisions and take care of myself and really work on receiving, allowing myself to receive. And so like my like s truths that I need to work on, I have to work on harder and that's beautiful. And I love that. And I'm so grateful for that. And, you know, I have to, especially in the beginning, be there all of the time. And so it's a, it's a big adjustment to me because my hours were a lot less than they were. But with all of that said, it is the best. I wouldn't want anything else. And um, I'm just, it, it gets easier every day. As, and that's just it. When you embark on something new, you go through that period of just adjusting, learning, and then creating a new truth for your life. And so it's just very exciting. We have a lot of regular members and 
these are people that I've never met before. So it's introducing me to new people in the community, which is very exciting. And, um, you know, my heart told me to do it. I trusted my heart and I took an expensive leap. And um, I feel confident that all will continue to go exactly as it should, which is, you know, the plan for the greater good of the world and myself. So I'm, I'm stoked to sit back and just enjoy the ride. Watch it. Try not to interact and let things be. <laughs> so everything's at yogawithshauna.com. Facebook, we're Yoga with Shauna. And Instagram is Yoga with Shauna. Uh, it's S-H-A-W-N-A. And um, everyone that works at the space, it's a school. So it's an internship experience. So people who graduate from a yoga teacher training, they get a three-month internship to work and teach at the space. And then people in my Reiki master's program, they get to intern at the Reiki clinic. So you learn from hands-on experience, what I think is very important for a healer uh, when they first get started. I think that's priceless. I wish maybe that I had that in the beginning of my career. And since I didn't, it definitely uh, showed me the value of offering that to others. And I'm, I feel very, very happy that I can do that to my students. So if you're ever in San Diego or if you're reading this and you are local to San Diego, please stop in, say hello, or take a class, or get a Reiki session, or sign up for a certification course, um, or just simply say hi. Thanks for your time, Jay.